Assalamu alaikum. Resuming where we left off, this is an excellent model showing a ruptured annulus fibrosis with the herniatic nucleus propulsus. Commonly, we call this in the layman's term disc slip. Now, clinically, how will the question come in your paper? They will explain that uh, an older individual or a person who lifts boxes and weights. He suddenly experienced a sudden snap and pain in the back region which radiates towards the legs. Now there is an important point here, the radiation of pain. If you see here, as I mentioned, the outer layer is the annulus fibrosis, the fibrous part and inside is the gel-like nucleus propulsus. It is due to the weakening of this fibrosis either due to age related changes or due to the stress endured by it in lifting and moving that when this comes out it can compress the nerves behind. It usually compresses the spinal nerve as it exits from the intervertebral foramen. And since this happens in the lumbar vertebrae more often, the lumbar plexus is affected. And since they supply the legs, that is why the pain is experienced at the legs. Alongside that, there can be weakness and other symptoms as well. So this shows you exactly that situation. Now, we've already covered the gross features of the spinal cord externally. Let us look at it at a cross section. Now, this is a question that will come in your SEQs. They often ask, tabulate the nucleuses of the gray matter of the spinal cord. Now, just to orient yourselves, this is a cross section of the spinal cord at the lumbar vertebrae. This is most probably L1. You can see the vertebra here. And you can even see the spinal cord covered with the meningeal layers, outermost is dura mater, and how it sheaths the spinal nerve. You can see the rootlets here. Let us remove the, dura, the meningeal layer. You can see the rootlets once again from the front and the back. They form the dorsal horn, or the, uh, the, sorry, the dorsal root, and as well as the ventral root. The dorsal root has your the ganglion, which is not being selected here, but that is your posterior root ganglion both confined to form your spinal nerve which exits through the intervertebral foramen. Now over here at the cross section this butterfly region is your gray matter. In the outer whiter is your white matter. Another point to show is there. This is your anterior median fissure. A fissure is like basically an opening longitudinal furrow like. On the back side however you have the sulcus, the posterior sulcus, a small, a long groove like on the back side. The anterior mean fissure, this is exactly where you had your anterior spinal artery. If you can remember, the two arteries coming from the vertebral arteries. Now, if you look at the gray matter, although it gives a butterfly shape, but that is describing it with a simile, the posterior part is known as the dorsal horn. The anterior heart is known as the ventral horn. The dorsal horn is concerned with all sensory input coming from these posterior dorsal root nerve. Well, if you look at the spinal nerve as a whole, it's actually composed of nerve fibers within them. There are nerve fibers which are carrying sensory modalities which pass through the dorsal root through the rootlets into the dorsal horn and from the anterior horn you have the <coughs> the motor sensation uh, motor modalities passing through the ventral root and then into the spinal nerve there are all these small fibers the example would be akin to like a cable and inside the cable you have all those copper wires so aside from the dorsal root and the ventral root there is a, uh, sorry, the dorsal horn and the uh, and, uh, ventral horn. There is a lateral horn. Excuse me. It's just a focus here. Here we go. This region right here. If I were to draw it, I just want to highlight it for you. Here we go. You can see a little bit of bulge here. This is only present in the thoracolumbar region, thoracic, thoracic lumbar region. And uh, the cervical and sacral portion, they're devoid of this. It's an important MCQ. 
this lateral horn is only present in this thoracolumbar region and you'll see why actually there's a certain um, nucleus here which gives off a certain modality now the, as I said that the question they ask in the SQ is to tabulate or enlist all the nucleuses within the gray matter so let us divide this all. first let me so let us divide the ventral horn and the dorsal horn. I'm going to draw it for the black line. Let's use black. And here's the dividing line. Here again, you have the dorsal root, the ventral root. Uh, sorry, the dorsal horn and the uh, ventral horn. Here is your lateral horn, the small budge on the side. And here we have the central canal right here in the center. Now, the question as I said they are asked is tabulate or enlist the nucleus is present within the gray matter. In the dorsal horn, at the topmost, there you have the substantia gelatinosa. Well, just write it down here so you can remember. Sub, it's too small actually. The substantia gelatinosa is the nucleus which receives the sensations of pain and temperature and these come from your spinothalamic tract. So, Stantia gelatinosa. Let's make this a little bigger. Here we go. Much better. So, pain and temperature come from the spinothalamic tract, from the lateral side, and then they will come and synapse with the substantia gelatinosa. And from here on, then there's the decussation, but we'll do that in the next video. So the first nucleus in the spinal cord is spangia deltanosa. It is sensory and it is in the dorsal horn. The next one is your nucleus proprius. It comes right in front of the spangia deltanosa. And this one receives the modalities of two-point discrimination, vibration, proprioception. Nucleus proprius and all these sensations they come from the dorsal column tract uh, just to uh, clarify the uh, terminology the dorsal column refers to this white matter part right over here here's the lateral column and here's the anterior white column this of the gray matter is your dorsal horn ventral horn and lateral horn so nucleus proprius receives the sensations of two-point discrimination also known as fine touch and it will then send them upwards in the ascending tracts. These two nucleuses are present throughout the entire length of the spinal cord. The ones which are present only in the thoracolumbar region that includes first of all the nucleus dorsalis also known as the Clark's column. The nucleus dorsalis nucleus dorsalis you can also call it the Clark's column this one will receive the sensation of balance vibration from the spinal cerebellar tract and the, the this will send it to the cerebellum up above so when you think of the nucleus dorsalis or Clark's column think cerebellum and once again it's only present in the thoracolumbar region the other two up above they're present throughout the other nucleus which is present only in the thoracolumbar region it has a long name but it will be present in the lateral horn and I forgot to mention the lateral horn itself is only present in the thoracolumbar region why because of the presence of this nucleus and this nucleus is known as it's a quite long name the preganglionic sympathetic outflow I'll label it here preganglionic sympathetic out flow. Let's put this here so it's easy to appreciate. It is from this nucleus that you have your sympathetic discharge. They will pass through the spinal nerve and through the spinal nerve they'll go through the gray ramus. The gray ramus will communicate with the sympathetic chain on the sides. You can't see them here but once we do autonomic nervous systems we'll go into more details. So here is the source of all your sympathetic supply. 
parasympathetic, however, comes from the sacral region and cervical region where you have all your parasympathetic nerves. We'll do that separately once again. The sympathetic only comes from the thoracolumbar region. The ass is in the viva and in the MCQs. So you have two in the back side, two in the middle. Now we come to the front. In the front, and let's use a different color this time. I should have used the red for the motor and the blue for the sensory because the all the sensory are over here and they should be blue it's not really a, a, a hard and fast rule just a common color scheme they use the motor up in the front now the nucleus is in the front generally throughout the length you will have a medial group and a lateral group the medial group will supply the axial muscles the axial muscles mean the ones on your neck your thorax your abdomen the muscles in the center the lateral group will supply the limbs so it makes sense that you only find this nucleus near the brachial plexus which supplies the upper limb and the lumbar plexus which supplies the lower limb the lateral group you won't find these in other parts and keep in mind from this nucleus there are two types actually for each you have uh, well not the nucleus itself but the afferents which lead them you have your alpha efferents and the gamma efferents the alpha efferents they will go and supply the extrafusal fibers the extrafusal fiber means the outside of the muscle for the draw muscle here just for your let's imagine this is one fusiform biceps the outer part in black is your extrafusal fibers. In the center, let's use yellow here. This is your intrafusal fiber. So the intrafusal fibers will be supplied by the gamma efferents. Again, both these fibers will pass through the rootlets, the ventral root and the spinal nerve. As I mentioned, okay, the spinal nerve is like a cable and this cable has all these copper fibers in them. So here you have the fibers passing through the spinal nerve and they're supplying the extrafusal and intrafusal fibers. Now, the exception is in the cervical region. These two are present, medial is present throughout, lateral group will present near the limbs. But up in the cervical region, you have two extra nucleuses. And let me erase this first. Here we go. I can't erase the text, no problem. And those are, the one in the medial side, it will be known as the accessory nucleus. Now, the accessory nerve is your 11th cranial nerve, which comes from the medulla region. Now, that's the cranial part. The spinal part comes right here from the cervical, although we're looking at the lumbar part of the spinal cord. But just imagine this is the, uh, the uh, cervical part. From this region, you'll have the spinal part of the accessory nerve. And these, this supplies your sternocleidomastoid and your trapezius. Laterally, we'll have the, here we go, right over here, it's a little big. Here we have the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve, I think I got uh, both of them mixed up. The phrenic should be in the medial, accessory should be in the lateral. But in any case, both are in the ventral horn. The phrenic nucleus obviously gives off your phrenic nerve which supplies the diaphragm and remember the phrenic nerve comes from C3, C4, C5 only these three regions will have the nucleus they send off the nerve rootlets they combine to form the phrenic nerve and that descends down to the diaphragm so these were the nucleuses of your spinal cord you can either draw the whole thing which is quite nice or you can tabulate them or enlist them even as a review just a quick review substantia deltanosa pain temperature Nucleus propius, fine touch, two point discrimination, both are in the dorsal horn. Nucleus dorsalis and the preganglion synthetic outflow are only present in the thoracolumbar part of the spinal cord. And nucleus dorsalis is related with your cerebellum, preganglion synthetic outflow with your sympathetic discharge. Medial group are in the front, lateral group on the side. Accessory and phrenic are only in the cervical region. And with that, the next topic is the ascending and descending tracks which we'll do in part 3.